Hi everyone, it's Michael. This video is all about knowing when to intervene as your orchids are adapting to semi-hydroponics and what steps to take when you do. So for my case study, I have selected this gorgeous psychopedlum I picked up from Sprouts. I got this guy about a month ago, $15, and I converted him immediately to semi-hydroponics. Now the tricky thing in this process is all outward appearances would indicate that this plant is doing beautifully. The blooms are still intact, they smell phenomenal, there is no discoloration of the leaves, everything is lush and pleasant, but something darker does lurk under the surface. So let's go in closer and take a look. Like I said, this plant is a real stunner. Look at the vivid colors on the blooms. The purples and the greens, they are all fully intact and they are just absolutely gorgeous. And the smell is incredible. Even the vegetation is lush, it's green, it's perky, it just seems like it's doing great. But if I tilt the pot upwards and you take a look at the base, you can see that right on the roots, right next to the uh, pseudobulb of the new growth, they're rotting. And also, if I take you into this portion, you can see, even without touching them, you know that those roots are mushy and rotting. So the tricky thing to understand is, even though the plant looks like it is doing beautifully, the roots are telling a very different narrative. And it says, hey, the gas exchanges that are happening within this container are really starting to compromise my health. So it's important to identify that that is an issue before it comes to a point where the pseudobulbs start to rot or the leaves start to fall. Because you can see even if you get closer to the pseudobulbs, they are not plump, they are not juicy, they are kind of shrivelly little prunes. So my objective today is to go ahead and unpot this, remove the rotting roots to kind of minimize the impact that the conversion has on the plant. So let's just get rid of the decaying matter so it doesn't further impact the adaptation. And as sad as it makes me, we have to remove the gorgeous flower spikes. Because like I've said in other videos, the plant is going to invest its energy in maintaining those blooms in the hopes of being pollinated and carrying on its, uh, its legacy, its line. So by removing those flower spikes, it's going to force this plant into active growth mode, and it's going to force itself to invest in its own root All development. Right guys, you know how fond I am of telling you what my tools are, so let's jump in. This right here is a leftover from Chinese takeout, but I love to use it as a sterile workspace because I can just dishwash it. So I've got that guy there. I have my zygopetlum. I have my big pot that I dump all of my um, unwashed leka beads into. My clean leka beads, my Fizan 20 solution, which is two teaspoons per gallon. Um, and that's just in here already diluted and mixed. Uh, word to the wise, cinnamon, you'll use this in a lot of your endeavors as an orchid grower. But if you buy it from Sprouts, uh, you can buy it in just a little bag and it's so, so much cheaper. This entire thing I think was 18 cents. So just do it that way, it'll save you a lot of money. Cause really you're just paying for the container. Uh, I've got my sterilized cutting tools. I also have some Q-tips to work with. I have my one gallon watering can, my kelp max to support with the process of the rooting. Uh, of the plant. I have some duct tape and I also have a little vase just to preserve the blooms because you know they're going to be beautiful for a few more days and I would love to enjoy them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dump all of the old LECA medium into my dirty LECA container. So let's just go ahead and very gently do that. Look at this sad little root system. Everything is so mushy. And when you squeeze it, you can see a little discharge comes out, which is just not cute. Um, so I'm gonna end up removing probably most of these roots. I actually can't feel a single viable root. And this is something that you should all know. Don't be discouraged by this. This orchid will recover and it is going to do beautifully. But these roots were not suited to semi-hydroponics. It was not suited to this kind of growing environment. So the inevitable course was that these roots were going to rot. But the trick is, if you allow them to continue rotting and to continue to release all of those gases and engage in that gas exchange, it's going to poison the plant. The orchid will poison itself as it attempts to adapt. So let's remove that obstacle and make an informed decision. You don't have to remove every single time, but if there are this many roots and this much rot going on, know that it's going to have a larger impact than say, if you're converting a Phalaenopsis and it has maybe two or three viable roots, it's going to be a little different in terms of how much the process of adaptation impacts the plant. So now that we've done that, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to go ahead and remove the rotting roots. All right, guys. And this is what it looks like after I've removed the rotting roots. 
kind of upsetting, isn't it? Kind of makes you feel like, ugh, I have made the wrong decision by putting this into semi-hydroponics. I should return this to classic bark medium immediately. Well, that's where you would make a mistake. Of course this is jarring, of course it's upsetting, because you feel like the plant just can't possibly make it through this, but it can. And by being wishy-washy, you are basically writing a death sentence for your orchid. This is unpleasant, but it will triumph through it. But forcing it through the stress of converting to another medium one more time is going to be even worse. So let's just continue on the process and stay true to the course. I can go ahead and remove the flower spikes because these won't be necessary in just a moment. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give my clipping tool just a quick spritz with the Fizan solution. Sorry. Get it all sterilized before the cut. And ugh, I always hate doing this, it makes me so upset. But here we go. I did myself a real disservice by not doing this sooner. I knew I should have done this right when I started, but I just wanted to enjoy the blooms for longer because I'm selfish and I'm impulsive. And it really, really had an impact on the root system. Had I done this sooner, it would have started to put out new roots faster. Just be aware of that. Oh, I'm sorry, little guy. Thank you for bringing me joy. So in these go to my sweet little vase. And hopefully I can just take a a little gander at them every so often and remember the beautiful times. <laughs> All right, to the side these go. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and give this plant a good spray down in my Fizan solution just to ensure that it is good and clean and sterile. I'm also gonna be sure to spray right where I have just made the cuts on the flower spikes. And then I'm going to give the entire plant a quick rinse. All right, guys, so that's all done. And I just wanted to share with you the most incredible sign of hope. So although it seems like all hope is lost, look at that right there. You think it's a root? You're wrong. That is a new growth altogether. So even in spite of all of these circumstances, this plant is honed in on its own survival and it is still trying to thrive. So just remember that when you feel like it's a hopeless process. Now that I have taken care of this part, I'm just gonna go ahead and get it repotted. And of course, you know that I want to give this a quick spray of the Fizan 20 solution to make sure it is good and disinfected. And I can just leave it right in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and begin the process of filling with Lekka beads. All right, guys, so now here's something that's kind of tricky about zygopedlums. You cannot submerge the rhizome, otherwise it will rot and die. So it is so, so imperative, it is so crucial that you give it just a little room to breathe. Understand that this is going to be a loose fit, yes, but let's just go ahead and get it situated in its new home. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I treat kelp max a lot like I treat fertilizer. I do it weekly, weekly, and the recommended dose is one tablespoon per gallon once a month. That being said, when I'm using it as a supplement to the fertilizer or I'm mixing it in with the fertilizer solution, I'll do maybe one teaspoon per gallon at every watering. That being said, when you are trying to get a uh, plant to reroot, to rework its entire system, to kickstart its growth, you want to make sure that you're using it at the recommended dosage and you're allowing it to soak for a period of about an hour. So what I have in my watering can here is one tablespoon per gallon and I am going to go ahead and tape off the holes on the zygopedlum and give it a good soak. And that's it. I'm gonna allow this to soak for a period of about an hour before I drain as usual. Okay, Google, set a timer for one hour. Some of the final steps include my handy dandy cinnamon and my q-tips. So I'm just going to go ahead and help myself to a clean q-tip and I'm going to just get a good hearty dip into this bag of loose cinnamon. So I'm going to load up my q-tip like so. Now I'm going to go to where we made the cut on the flower spike and just go ahead and give that area a good coating of cinnamon. The objective here is it's going to sterilize the wound because it's a fabulous natural antiseptic. 
but it is also going to help the wound dry out. And again, the objective here is to force the plant into active growth mode by forcing it to disengage from investing its energy into the blooms. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that with a fresh Q-tip on the opposite side here with the other flower spike. That's gonna go ahead and sterilize and dry out the flower spike wounds. I'm gonna drain this after that hour is up and this plant will be on its road to recovery. There is no need to flush the system. There is no need to drain it. It can sit in the reservoir until you're ready to water it next time. And um, hopefully this is going to propagate and promote root growth. Uh, it is almost like adding a uh, rooting hormone to your plant. And in my experience, it really, really does help accelerate the wellness and the development of your orchid. So. Hopefully you guys find this helpful. Um, as always, I invite you to leave a comment below if you have any questions or concerns. Please don't forget to like or subscribe if you find these videos useful. And thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day, guys.